Welcome back to the band guide. I'm your band guide, Colin. And this is another five minute garage band expert where I'm bringing you 30 tips and tricks for mixing and recording in garage band in 30 days. Today, we're going to be talking about the high pass filter. The high pass filter is the only EQ move that I do on almost every channel in my track. And that's because the high pass filter is the fastest way to clear out space for the low end sources in our mix. Not all of our tracks need to have low end, but they likely all have at least a little bit of energy in the low end that's actually getting in the way of the sources like the bass guitar and kick drum that will need low end. So using a high pass filter to cut out some of those frequencies will make more space for those sources. There's only so much sonic space in a mix, so we wanna cut out the frequencies of sources that don't need it to make space for the other sources that do need it. So let's jump into an example here. This is an electric guitar, and let's just listen to this soloed. Notice that there's a fair amount of information happening below 100 hertz here. That's gonna get in the way of a kick drum or bass guitar. So we're just gonna turn on our high pass filter here and we're just gonna bring it up until we hear it starting to cut into that sound and then we might scale it back just a little bit. Okay, let's bypass and turn this back on and see if we even notice this high pass filter kicking on. Not really, right? You might notice if you're listening to great headphones or on really good speakers, you might notice a little bit of rumble that's gonna be disappearing. That's good, that's not adding to our mix, but it could be clouding the low end in our mix. So that's a great quick way that we've just made more space for the low end in our mix. Let's jump up to another common example. That's an acoustic guitar. Now an acoustic guitar is a full range instrument. It has low end all the way up to high end frequencies. And uh, you don't necessarily need the low end frequencies in a full mix. In a rock mix, you often are not gonna hear the low end frequencies. So let's listen to this acoustic in the mix and see if you can notice the low end frequencies. I'm gonna boost the volume just a little bit here so it really stands out to you. Higher, higher. What I am enjoying from that guitar is the upper frequencies, kind of the mid-range frequencies. They're adding a lot of energy to the song. I'm not necessarily noticing what's happening in this low end, but I'm seeing a lot that's happening down there. Higher, higher. So let's turn on this high pass filter. I've already set this one, and let's see if we even notice that the change when I bypass it and turn it back on. Higher. I don't even notice it coming in, right? But I hear everything I want from that acoustic, but I know I'm getting rid of some of that low end that's gonna be getting in the way of your kick drum and your bass guitar. Let's listen to it in solo and see if we can hear the tonal change. I mean, that's pretty drastic. There's definitely some rumble going away, but there's also a little bit of the low end from that guitar that's going away but it's not something that we're hearing in the mix anyway. So use your high pass filter to get rid of things that aren't adding to the source. Just cut them out and then you're gonna make space for other sources. Now, the last thing that I'll mention about a high pass filter is it's not exclusive to upper frequency instruments. So for example, I always have a little bit of a high pass filter on my kick drum. I, always ha I often have a little bit of a high pass filter on my bass. And this is because there's speakers, like really great subwoofer speakers, extend even below 20 hertz a lot of the times. And I can't necessarily hear that at all. I certainly don't have any monitoring system that I own that can produce those frequencies really well. 
So I don't wanna risk that my mix is just kind of extending down into those super low frequencies and they're just gonna add kind of muddiness on a great big sound system. So if my low end sources also have just a high pass filter, just to cut out a little bit, even if I don't necessarily want to cut into the low end frequencies, that just gives me peace of mind that I know it's gonna translate onto a bigger system and I'm not gonna have so much low end that's just kind of floating around in a range that I'm not hearing in my mix. So don't be afraid to put a high pass filter on your sources. Sometimes I even do it on my master bus, on the master track EQ, just to make sure that I'm not getting anything. It can also add a little bit of the punchiness to the frequencies right above it, just to make sure that there's nothing down there that's taking up energy. If you clear that out, it lets those frequencies at that the 50 hertz range just have a little more space to breathe and have a little more energy. So definitely don't be afraid of using a high pass filter. If this video is helpful for you, be sure to subscribe. If you haven't already, be sure to grab my free EQ cheat sheet. I'll link to that in the description below, and I'll see you tomorrow with another video.